Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, for this video we're going to check up on the scorpions that we rehoused on Friday. Uh, make sure they're all doing well and we're going to go ahead and give them a feed. I also have a few additions that I'll show towards the end of the video. So this is my fifth instar Leoris Conquestriatus and it is enjoying its little cork bark thing there. So let's see if I can't get a better shot. I can never tell if you guys are getting good views or not until I put them on my phone. I guess my phone screen is better than the camera screen. Let's see. Got a nice little roach here. Nice kill. Good to know they're settling in nicely. Going in for another sting. Let's see if I can't get closer without it shaking up. Maybe you guys can see that clearly. I hope so. Alright. So we will put his cork bark back over him. We're in the general area. I'm not going to put it right on top of him. Alright. Oh, and I've got to refill his water dish. So give me a quick second while I refill this. I meant to do it earlier, and obviously I've forgotten about that. Okay. Just gonna refill that water dish. Alright, so there's that one. We will move on to two and three, and we did not rehouse four because it is on the smaller side. So the rest of these guys, as we know, got the tub work containers. Yeah, he looks like he's doing well. Just relaxing. Let's see if he gets crazy when we drop a bug in front of him. <laughs> Let me zoom out just in case. Sorry about that, the battery died so I had to replace it with the charged one. And he ran under here within that time. There he is. Let's see how he does. Nice. There's the limit. There we go. Getting some munching on. Let's refill that water dish. And I'll just leave that piece of cord broke over there. There is two pieces in this enclosure because the one piece that I was going to use broke. <laughs> so. There's that one. And here's number three. Let's see. So 
Sometimes it's a pain to try to get the right lighting, but I'm working with my cell phone light. And the camera does take good video, but not in dark. There we go. It does not want to be in the light. So let's give it a bug real quick. Oh, it didn't like that. Come on, little guy. Take him down. No? I don't understand why. Maybe he just doesn't want to eat right now. I'll leave it in there for a bit. And then, uh, yeah. And I'll do my usual checks. A couple hours. Pre-kill. 24 hours. Take it out. All right. So, we'll refill the water dish on that one. A little much. That guy back up too. Oh, hitting the camera. Alright, so up next we have Androxinus Crossicata. We will only be feeding one because the other one is in pre molt and already hasn't eaten for a couple weeks now. So this is the fast guy, the crazy guy, the main reason I realized I needed to put them in bigger enclosures. Um, he is the one that tries to get out all the time, but he's also never hungry or never not hungry. So unless he is this time because he may be in pre -molt. he's looking a little chunky and he hasn't eaten since um, Sunday so we'll give him a larger size baby roach let me kind of get a better view on that Lift up his hide again. Or just kind of coax him out a bit, and that works too. Alright, the roach is in. And let's see what he does. He may not eat it is a little plump like I said I'll try to drop it in the back with him no nope he don't want it well, that's kinda sad of course I say <laughs> he's not, he's never hungry, or never not hungry, and now he's not hungry, so, but they're doing well. Here is the pre-molt one right here. I'm hoping to get a nice molt here soon, because that one is looking very plump. Uh, that'll be a fourth in star, it is at third right now. Um, 
like I said, it is that plump. It hasn't eaten for a couple weeks. So if you're ever wondering what pre-molt looks like, that's what it looks like. You will have spread plates on the back. See how spread out they look. And uh, they'll be abnormally large compared to the last time you fed them. Like I said, it ha this one hasn't eaten for two weeks and it's it looks like it just ate a roach larger than itself. So we will leave that one be. Let me find the names, there we go. I am picky, so I need to make sure the names line up. Okay, and we've got the last two that got housed in bigger enclosures which are the Parabuthus transvelicus. Uh, this is number two. We should be able to get a nice feed on this guy maybe. Looks like he's been digging a bit already. Or just uh, mulling around at least. Clean out that uh, water dish. Zoom out a bit. Oh yeah, so there he is down there. So he has been digging. That's good. Um, I'll kind of lean that cork bark back over that hole and he'll just continue to dig around underneath in it. So let's see if Mr. PT is hungry. Let me get him this way. And oh yeah. Nice. Stingy stingy as always. I think it just started right in the eye. <laughs> oh. These the Parabuthus transvelicus continue to be my favorite species, or at least the favorite ones that I own. Um, mainly because they're super aggressive eaters. Um, we all like that feeding response. So, if you want a feeding response, Parabuthus transvelicus is the way to go. And then this one we will not feed, but uh, we will take a look at her. And I did sex it, it is a female. So that's pretty cool. The first scorpion that I've ever sexed is a female Parabuthus transvelicus. And it seems to be enjoying it as well. Come on camera. There we go. So, really simple. It's not insanely expensive to keep these animals. It's really not even that expensive to get them. It just depends on how many you get. Um, it is very addicting. So don't think that you might just stop at one. I mean, maybe you can, but I don't think it's that you can't. I think it's that most people don't want to. They get one scorpion or one tarantula and uh, they want more. They realize how easy it is to keep them and that they don't take up much space. A lot of people don't realize how much space they will take up, so make sure you think about that before you get a larger collection. That is the main reason I have slowed down tremendously on buying new animals, because I have enough room now for when they are all grown, they will fit right. Um, if I get too many more, then I will... <laughs> I just won't have anywhere to put them. I don't have the room nowhere. I'd have to literally move to get them. But, uh, the 
of course, after saying all that, we have a, four editions. So I was pretty torn up about that OBT escaping. <laughs> so uh, my buddy Brian Baker had them for sale. So I ended up getting two. There's one little guy right there. He still hasn't gone under his leaf. And these guys are by far crazier than the last one that I have. Uh, this one almost escaped as I was rehousing it. And uh, this one didn't almost escape, but it's just crazy fast as well. It's made its web underneath that leaf. And we will go ahead and try to feed these guys too. I also got um, two Afonapelma Hensies. Let me see. They're a little... They're fast, so I gotta make sure. I mean, if it crawls out, I'm not worried about it biting me, but you can probably just barely see it right there. Right where I'm pointing my finger. That's its butt, the little black spot. These guys are tiny. And what I'm gonna do with them is take my smallest pin heads and crush the heads, and we will feed them that way because I am not trying to do fruit flies again <laughs> like I did with the... Uh, with the Hapalopus species Columbia larges. Okay, and then let's see. Here is the other one. And it is right there. You can see it. it looks like a little rock or a pebble. I don't think the camera's going to pick it up too great. So, let's see, maybe. Hmm. No. That's okay. They're tiny, and I'll tell you that. Super small. Um, I will try to feed the OBTs. Uh, well, no. Nah. We're not going to do the OBTs on camera because I don't think that's going to be safe for them. Um, I don't want them getting out on the table, and I've got the camera here. I've got a very small table that my camera's on, so I don't have a lot of room to work with catching something. When he almost escaped the first time, uh, I had to catch him with the actual lid that I was going to put on his cup. It was the only thing I had. My eye brain farted and forgot a catch cup altogether. Didn't even have another small cup. All I had was what I needed to make a new house for him. So, um, yeah, at least there are my new additions. Like I said, I lost one, got two. It'd be really cool if I found the other one and then I got three. Um, and then two of Fonapelma Hensies. So thanks again to Brian Baker with uh, Stone Manus Invertebrates. Um, you can find him on most of the Tarantula pages on Facebook. Um, I know he also has a MeWe. So if you want to go check him out on there, uh, he's got a pretty decent variety he's also got a warehouse so if you tell him what you're looking for he might be able to find it for you uh, he also ships I've never had to have anything shipped I get I just go meet him he's that close to me so I've gotten lucky and I have bought most of my spiders from him um, so yeah if you'd like go ahead and give him a holler and uh, yeah I think we're gonna go ahead and kill this video uh, subscribers, thank you for watching, and yeah, we will see you next time, which should be Sunday. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving, and eat as much food as you can, because then we got to wait till Christmas. <laughs> but, alright guys, you have a good holiday.